Hey everybody, CryptoCal here, and welcome to the next episode of FTB Skies. So unfortunately, since the last episode, I have had something kind of catastrophic happen. I had my hard drive that I used to store all of my recordings completely die on me. It basically went down to zero read and write speed, so I can't get any of the data off that drive. So what that means for this playthrough is I have lost about two episodes worth of recordings that I hadn't edited yet. Thankfully, it wasn't more than just two episodes, and I think we're going to be able to get through without uh, refilming anything. What I'm going to do is go ahead and do a basic tour of what went down in both of those episodes at a very basic level, just so we can catch up to speed, and then we can just keep pushing on. So the first thing maybe to start off with is I did a little bit of redecorating around the place here. I added some of these custom trees that I had designed in a creative world and I used the schematic cannon to kind of place them around so they just add a little bit of greenery and life to the area and I'm definitely planning on adding more of these around the entire island as we expand. I also went ahead and added in this little farm area here, mainly just to fill the space, but this also acts as a source of flax because right now we don't really have access to uh, string so this is our only real access to getting a little bit of string here and there so for now, this is going to be what we're going to be using for our string needs. And I added a small little pond around the side here, just more for decoration. So yeah, just did a little bit of terraforming here, just making it look a little nicer. So the main purpose of the episode that was going to be coming out next was going through and filling in the entire create workshop with all sorts of different machines and contraptions that are going to help us in the long term. And there's quite a few, as you can see. So basically, we have this entire first floor completely done up with all sorts of machines and I added this create elevator here and the way this works is you come inside of the elevator that I've designed you change the floor level to whatever floor you want to go to so in this case we have two floors you can right click on this button and it takes us up the elevator which is so so cool I love this thing and up here we have also the start of the next floor so this is the first contraption I made right here and this contraption's entire purpose is to create all the different casings that we would want in the create mod so for example right now I have the andesite casing the brass casing and the copper casing we put some raw logs in this barrel up top here and they drop down these chutes onto a mechanical saw, which will then strip the logs and put them onto the depot, where then we put our whatever material we want in here. So either andesite alloy or brass or copper, we put that material in the barrel and the deployer will just basically press it on top of the stripped log. And the drawer here has a puller upgrade, which is facing up. So it pulls the casing off of the depot once it's finished. Very similarly on the other side here, I have a basin with a mixer set up and this is primarily mixing just the andesite alloy. And that's because this doesn't require any sort of heat. This basically is our iron input where we put iron inside of here. I have a pedestal here generating infinite andesite, which is then being pumped directly inside of the basin. And then here we have this set to distribute only iron nuggets. So it'll only pull out iron nuggets out of this drawer instead of the ingots or the blocks. And that's how we're basically creating infinite andesite alloy. Likewise, on the other side, we have almost the exact same setup, but instead we have a blaze burner underneath with the straw. And that's because the brass requires to be heated in order to create the brass. So we have our zinc and our copper inputs here. And then on the back here, we have uh, the same kind of setup with the pipe pumping the different materials in here. But what I also have, if we can sneak on in here, what I have here is an ender tank. Now, these ender tanks are fantastic at sending fluids long distances. Basically, what I have is the magma crucible here. I have it sped up a little bit, so I think we're going to have more than enough speed to keep the blaze burners back here running. But that also keeps the ender tank here fully stocked up as well, which will then let us infinitely send the lava over to this blaze burner, which is awesome. And while we're back here, you can see that I basically have all the wiring and stuff all done behind the scenes here. So all the item moving around and everything is all happening behind the scenes. And we have the power for the entire building basically running in terms of just shafts and gearboxes all through the perimeter. So it's easy to tap into the power when we need it. On this wall over here, we have 25 mechanical crafters all facing into this barrel. And this is going to be used for creating any of the larger contraptions that require a full five by five but this is the largest size of a craft that you are ever going to need for the create mod so this should be good enough for basically the rest of the pack and finally on the back here we have arguably the most important machine which is the precision mechanism machine the three barrels up here are for our three inputs for this machine so we have small cog wheels large cog wheels and iron nuggets this barrel right here is the input for the gold plates which then gets sent out onto the belt and they get sent across all the deployers and end up on the other side going into a funnel. 
That funnel basically brings them into this obsidian barrel, where they are then sorted depending on what type of item it is. If what comes into the barrel is a precision mechanism that's completed, it gets basically grabbed by this pipe right here and sent into the drawer. So everything else that isn't a precision mechanism gets sent by this pipe over to this set of tubes over here. Now, this trash can is basically here because I have this set to the nearest first, so everything's going to try and be trashed before it gets sent back over to the other side. And this is basically blacklisting all the different stages of precision mechanism so that these will never be trashed. The only items that are going to be trashed in here are the leftover kind of scrap items that we're going to get whenever the precision mechanism fails. And we could technically keep them and just kind of like either cycle them back into our storage or something. But I just figured it'd be a little bit easier just to trash them and not worry about them building up. And yeah, this is a very simple setup for precision mechanisms. If we come upstairs with the elevator once again, I will take a closer look here. So the elevator is basically being made by this elevator pulley, which is getting some power just from the shafts that I'm bringing up from downstairs. And the elevator contacts are what designate which floor you're on. And to make an elevator contact, basically what you have to do to make an elevator contact is by putting two of the redstone contacts together. And there's a whole create section about the elevator pulley and how it works. So I'm not going to go ahead and explain it too much, but this is essentially how you designate which floor you're on. And it's a really, really cool setup. And the last machine that I really have ready to go right now is just a small one right here that makes all sorts of different plates. So I have this filtered for like the different plates and we have a mechanical press just basically pressing anything that gets sent into this barrel. Now I wanted control of everything inside of this building. I wanted to be able to turn everything off and on whenever I wanted to, which is why we have this control panel that you see behind me. Essentially what this control panel lets us do is turn off very specific machines that we don't want running. So for example, the brass machine just turned off right here and so did the casing machine right here. The redstone links are here at the bottom. So basically all these redstone links are attached to various clutches throughout the building, which turn off the specific machines. There is the one clutch that's right here that is what I call the master switch. And the master switch is designated by the lava buckets up here. So if I switch this one off, then everything in the entire building shuts off. This is just a great way to kind of conserve on a little bit of lag in this area by making sure that the machines are turned off when we're not using them. So creating all these create contraptions is essentially what I did in the next episode. In the episode after that, I decided to start working on some progression. So what I ended up doing was basically working along our progression tab here, and I realized I hadn't actually been to one of these sky villages that are dotted around all over the place. And the sky villages are a part of the progression line here and i had already been to another village so i decided to go ahead and do a little bit of exploring and i found a bunch of good loot in the villages like some enchanted books and all sorts of stuff i may or may not have also grabbed a few of the residents while i was over there essentially what i did was i went ahead and looted about two or three villages brought back a bunch of good loot but then i noticed that there was also a side quest to, that's called the castle in the sky and it's a completely optional side quest it says that rumor has it that there is a forgotten castle far off in the skies. By crafting the Eye of Sky Legends, you may be able to locate one of these and take its treasures for yourself. And boy, did I have to go far. So just for reference, this is as far as I can zoom out. And these are all the nearby villages and stuff that we can see. This castle was so far away. We're in the minus 13,000s right now, 15,000. This is where I ended up going, probably about 17,000 blocks diagonal away. This is so, so far away. So thankfully the Emerald Jetpack was definitely required for this trip. I actually had to come back and recharge it at one point because I just ran out of power. And when I tell you that the loot in this castle was OP, I mean it. First of all, we ended up getting a ton of spawners like just an absolute ton of spawners. They're all kind of just the base apotheosis spawner, but there was all sorts of spawners in there. Evoker, Vindicators, uh, there was Wither Skeletons, and some of these spawners had mobs that were wearing armor that was super OP. I'm pretty sure there was either a zombie spawner or something that had them spawning with armor that had Protection 10. Protection 10, It's it was crazy. So I went and I found so much stuff there. Like I found diamond blocks and i found netherite blocks like i got these nine netherite blocks all from them 16 nether stars was one of the some of the loot that i got there i think i got a dragon egg i got dragon heads this dragon head has protection 10 on it thorns 20 what am i gonna do with thorns 20 like just absolutely insane stuff i'm pretty sure i also got a bunch of beat yeah 20 beacons 20 beacons just 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 there in in barrels all over the place 
And this is what the entire place looked like. I think I pretty much looted the entirety of this place, but I can go and explore and see if I can find maybe one or two more areas to show off. There's a ton of cool stuff over here. I don't know if any of this is going to be like a room that we haven't been in. So there is some loot here. Uh, this is a zombie spawner. And the entire castle itself had all of these various doors. And you would occasionally get door keys as loot drops in the chests but I wasn't exactly sure what the point of them was because you could always just break around them like this so I think they're more designed if you are playing in a game mode that doesn't allow you to break blocks it might be kind of more of a dungeon crawler at that point but I thought that was kind of cool still and in here we can see just some of the kind of loot that we're, we were getting and the internals of the structure are so cool like I because I can break through and see stuff, you can see all how things are wired up, kind of how the dungeon is meant to be explored. It looks like this is meant to be like almost some sort of challenge room, like some sort of puzzle. These hidden barrels are what the loot is. It's hidden all over the place. And like in here, look at this. 16 zombie villager spawn eggs, gold, golden apples, some more totems of undying. I have a whole shulker box of these now. More dragon heads and netherite, all sorts of stuff. Like the loot in here is just ridiculous. Oh, I have the... Uh... I don't even know why I'm doing this. I have night vision goggles I can put on. Let's go ahead and put those on the head slot. There we go. Now we have some light. I actually missed this one. This has a power 10 bow. Oh, that's awesome. I was actually wanting a good bow. Oh, and in here too? What's in here? Four mending books, six wither skulls. I didn't even notice those. That's actually really cool. Yeah, just really cool area. Lots of cool loot to explore and see. And I definitely recommend checking this place out if you haven't already. If you haven't found one of these in your own playthrough, this place is insane. So after that was all said and done and I finished exploring and such, what I did was I came back with a ton of loot that had really good enchantments on it. Now, normally disenchanting items into books and stuff is a very like late game, like you need very late game recipes and stuff to get that. But the disenchanter here is actually super doable. It just takes one crystallized obsidian, a little bit of obsidian pressure plate, which is really easy, and you're basically good to go. So I made one and I have it sitting over here. What this requires is power. So I hooked it into power over here and also experience. So this cognidium and I was just going in and dumping all sorts of enchantments off and getting the books back. So for example, if I took this power 10 bow and put it into the disenchanter, it would give me the power 10 book and then also the bow. Likewise, I could do this with the dragon head too. I could take the protection 10 off of this. Everything else I'm not super interested in right now, so I can just take the head back out. But after a bunch of disenchanting, I just basically applied a couple of books to my armor. So for example, this, this armor here has protection 10 and mending. This one has protection 10 and mending as well. And then also protection five on these two, because I didn't have anything quite better than that at that point. I also upgraded my netherite paxel. Of course, I gave it some efficiency and unbreaking and mending. So now it's going to be much easier to repair this. But the real winner was my sword. Look at this thing. I have looting 10, sharpness 20, mending and beheading. So this sword is absolutely insane. It does a ton of damage, 24 damage right now with extra attack range and attack speed. It has life steal, and it also has three empty sockets that I haven't actually filled yet. So I'm actually gonna rock this sword for quite a while, I think. So yeah, that's a very brief overview of what went on in the last two episodes that I lost the recordings of. So from here on out, we're basically all caught up and we're ready to push back into the pack. So I think the plan for today is to fix our power issue. This power setup here is just not cutting it anymore. So we are going to go and get ourselves working towards starting in mechanism. In this pack, mechanism is pretty much the best option for power sources mid game to late game. So considering we're moving ourselves into the mid game, I really want to get ourselves set up with some really good power. Now, I'm not talking about the fusion reactor and all of that type of stuff. That's a that's really end game. We're not at that point yet. What I really want to do right now is get ourselves into the gas burning generators. And the setup that I have in mind uses potentially up to nine gas burning generators, which is an absolute ton of power because these things are actually really amazing for power production. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We first need to start off into mechanism because we haven't done anything yet so far. So let's get a metallurgic infuser. Ideally an enrichment chamber, but we have to first make some steel and basic control circuits before we can do that. Actually, I'm going to want two of these metallurgic infusers. I want one of these to be doing redstone and one of them to be doing coal to make steel. And what do we get as a reward? Oh, we get some upgrades. Very nice. So metallurgic infuser down right here and here. So to start off, we're going to need a little bit of steel. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of coal into this to get some carbon and then also the iron. And that'll start making us the enriched iron. 
At the same time, let's do the exact same thing with redstone and the rest of the iron to start making some of the other components that we're going to need. We can actually use our temporal pouch to speed these up a little bit, even though they have no speed upgrades in them. And it actually doesn't require more power to speed these up, so it's actually really handy. And we have our steel dust coming through here. Now, once we run the enriched iron back through again, we get steel dust. Over here, we have actually, let's get a couple more. We have some of these infused alloys, which are what we're going to need to get some other machine parts. And we also want to do the exact same thing, but with osmium. Osmium actually makes these basic control circuits, which we also need. And we can go ahead and use these basic control circuits now to come back over here and make ourselves the enrichment chamber, which we have a little bit of steel in the system already. So let's go ahead and make one steel casing. I think we got the steel from a, from a quest at some point. So we can go ahead and make our enrichment chamber. And this will make it so that our materials will go a lot farther. So for example, I can put some redstone in here speed this thing up and we get the enriched redstone out of this which we can actually use to get 80 millibuckets instead of just 10 so it's really really worth it to run all of them through the enrichment chamber first we are going to want to enrich some more of this coal so let's just go ahead and do that really quickly and what we can actually do really quick i think is get some of these tier installers so what we can actually go ahead and do is shift right click with the tier installer on the machine and now we have three slots to work with. So now we can be producing three of these at once. You do want to make sure you have the auto sort turned on because that way it'll split them evenly across all three slots. So you can always maximize your speed. So the setup that I want to run with the gas burning generators involves having nine gas burning generators all working together to get that many we're going to need two steel casings per, so we need 18 of these total. And we might actually have enough stuff now that I've done a little bit of resource preparation here. And there we go, we got 18 steel casings, which is great. So we should, once we get some of these electrolytic cores, be able to create the gas burning generator. Now these require a bunch of infused alloy, so we need, I guess, nine of these total. So hopefully we have enough infused alloy, but we also need to get a bunch of dust. And we're gonna go ahead and do that inside of the crusher. So we haven't made the crusher yet. There we go, we have two lava buckets, that's great. We're actually gonna need one more steel casing then because we've used one for the crusher. And can we make a tier installer for this as well? Yes, we can, perfect. Let's go hook this thing into power really quick. So we wanna crush all of these ingots down into the dust form. And finally, we'll get our osmium dust and we should be good to go. Let's preemptively start creating a little more of the alloy because I know we're going to need a ton of it going forward. So there's going to be no harm in getting more of this going. And there we go. Our osmium dust is done. Let's go ahead and see if we can create the electrolytic core. We put all that away. Can we make this? We need nine. Nice. We have all nine and we should be able to craft up all nine of these gas burning generators. Unfortunately, they don't stack. So you have to grab them kind of one at a time. Oh, what are we out of? We have seven. We are out of infused alloy. I figured we would be. So that's why I started making a bunch more over here. And that I think should be all nine. There we go. All nine ready to go. Just for a little bit of ease of use here, let's just go ahead and put barrels on top of these and we are going to output we just want to auto output things to the top so let's go ahead and just auto eject all the items we need six of these pressurized reaction chambers now we have i think everything else we need we need some of these chemical tanks and dynamic tanks these are actually very easy to make we just need probably a couple more buckets oh we get four per recipe which is handy we just need six so we just need two of these recipes and the basic chemical tanks are easy as well and we need two of these per so we're just gonna need a bunch two, three, four, five, six enrichment chambers, which means we can hopefully go ahead and craft up one, two, three, four, five, six PRCs. We need three of these electrolytic separators, which require, again, three more of these cores, which we have, and one, two, three. And finally, we need three crushers. We're gonna need some more lava, though. Let's make an ender tank really quick just to grab some of that lava. Oh, we are out of blaze rods. I think this was on the red setting. Let me just go ahead and put this down for a sec. Was this on red, red, red? It is on red, 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 but we're empty on lava. Interesting. So the ender tank was strangely enough voiding the lava, even though there was no need for it anywhere else. So I was kind of confused. I flipped the lever off of the push setting. See, it's just voiding the lava like that. If I keep it on this setting here, which is what it's supposed to be, 
it just stores the lava for when it needs it. And then I have it pushing over on this side. So it's just strangely enough on this side right here, for some reason, it's just voiding lava. There we go. That should be okay. That is producing enough power and we have infinite lava again. So we are all set. Oh, we got a blaze spawner reward here or killing five blaze. So we can actually go ahead and grab a blaze data model. Oh, that's really cool. And a blizz spawner Just making up two more stacks of steel here. We're almost done. And there we go. Three crushers ready to go. And those are all the effectively all the machines from mechanism we're going to need for this setup. We're also going to be using a pedestal to generate some moss. I noticed that the moss block can actually be used in the crusher to turn into five biofuel, which is actually a really great return considering we can make infinite moss very easily. All we need is a spore blossom for infinite moss. And we're also going to want a material generator for the moss. Maybe a, not a maxed out one. Maybe the, this, this one right here, the 20 out of 40 speed and the 16. I think that should be enough speed for this generator. I should really be putting all this in my backpack though, because we are going to need to grab it all at some point. We're going to need a couple of the sinks to provide infinite water to our machines. I think two is probably what we're going to need. We are going to need some pressurized tubing from mechanism, maybe uh, 32 or so, and we'll upgrade them to the advanced tier as well. And we're going to want to speed all our machines up too. So that's going to be the expensive part is we're going to need a speed upgrade, energy upgrade. So we have 12 machines that can basically take the upgrades. And we're also going to want to get a couple of these muffler upgrades as well, because they will make the everything a little bit quieter. So part of the setup that we're going to be doing includes using a bunch of stuff from the laser IO mod. So I'm smelting up a bunch of these logic chips. They're very cheap. They just require some quartz, redstone, clay, and gold nuggets. And they give us four of these raw chips, which we then have to go and smelt into the normal logic chips. We get a card holder for free if we make an item card. So let's go ahead and grab all of these out. Let's make an item card really quick, which requires just some other basic resources. There we go and that will get us our card holder. This thing is super cool. It basically lets us store all of our cards stacked up inside of this inventory. So we're gonna need a bunch of the energy cards, fluid cards, and the item cards. I'm thinking we maybe make at least 16 of each. To speed things up in laser IO, we also have to use the card overclockers. So we don't actually need Oh, I, I held shift by accident, so now we just made an absolute ton of them. A stack is definitely going to be more than enough. Don't hold shift while you're doing that. And the last thing that we need from laser IO is just the nodes. So these require also one logic chip each, which I think we're going to need probably some more of now that I did the accidental shift, holding shift. So we'll make another stack of those or so. Let's go ahead and make 20 just for now. We might need a little bit more. Ah, 24 is good. And we can turn them all straight into... We can turn all these into 24 laser nodes and we have the wrench from the quest reward which we have to use to connect them all up and finally the last thing that we need from this mod is going to be the basic filters i think 32 of these should be fine as well okay so that was a bit of a bit of a grind to grab, gather all these materials up here but i think that's pretty much all we're going to need so once we have access to all the power that these are going to be producing we're going to have a tough time managing it all so before we start building this setup i want to get into very briefly into a mod that'll help us manage all that power. And of course, that mod, as always, is Flux Networks. Flux Networks lets us very easily and efficiently send and receive power and also offers us wireless charging for our devices. We can then keep our jetpack wirelessly charged just using one simple block. To get into Flux Networks, however, we need to get Flux Dust. Flux Dust is made in this pack in the Metallurgic Infuser with some redstone and obsidian dust. The obsidian dust is just made in the enrichment chamber using some normal obsidian. So we have some of that normal obsidian right here. Get all of this made up really quickly. There we go. And let's throw in a little bit of this into the infusing factory. So let's go ahead and basically just place a ton of obsidian in here. Get it all into flux dust. We want stacks and stacks of this stuff. So let's go ahead and just get that done. So some of the things that we're going to need include the flux plugs and the flux points. The flux plugs is how we're going to add energy to our system. And the flux point is how we're going to send energy. So for now, I want to go ahead and make a couple of these cores. Let's make one flux plug for now. We're actually going to need, I think, about three of these. So maybe we'll go ahead and just make the three that we're going to need. Three flux plugs. And then we're going to need to send some power using flux points. And I'll make three flux points for now as well. The flux controller just requires a bunch more of these cores and blocks to create. We can actually place the flux controller down pretty much anywhere. So I'm just going to place it down right 
I don't know, here for now. We have to now create a network. Let's just call this CryptoCal's network for now. We'll make this a private network. So that doesn't matter. There's no password. It'll just be access to me, but we're on single player, so it could be public too. But I'll keep it on private for now. Set it to this color right here and hit create. Now we can go wireless charging and we can actually enable wireless charging. We want to be able to charge our curio slots. So we can go ahead and apply this, enable the wireless. As soon as we start giving our wireless network some power, our jetpack will actually start to automatically charge. And I can test that by using a flux plug and placing it somewhere like right here. As you can see on the left, our jetpack is starting to charge. But now that's just a nice way to keep our jetpack fully charged up. So we have some power able to be sent in. We have all this stuff here. We have all of our cards, machines. I think we're basically all ready to go. So let's place in all of our gas burning generators and they are basically going to go pretty much centered with this wall here that I'm planning on having. So probably just three in the middle, just like that. And then we're going to stack them on top of each other, make a three by three of the gas burning generators. If you didn't know, the gas burning generators use the ethylene as fuel, not the liquid ethylene, just the normal ethylene. And it's created inside of the PRC, the pressurized reaction chamber. So we get 100 millibuckets of ethylene by using two biofuel and some hydrogen and water. The biofuel comes from crushing the moss like we talked about earlier, and the hydrogen comes from the electrolytic separator. I'm intentionally trying to keep this setup as compact as possible, which is why we're using a lot of laser IO because that's the laser IO is really good at keeping all these types of setups nice and compact. On the backs of all of these gas burning generators, we're gonna have to put in some of these advanced pressurized tubes. These will basically provide all the ethylene to the gas burning generators. So we're gonna have our PRCs behind the tubes here. So let's go ahead and just place them down. I'm gonna place them down in a vertical row. So we're gonna have all six just like this. And we want to actually configure these. Now, do I have the configurator from mechanism? I do not. Okay, so we actually have to go ahead and make that really quick. The configurator just takes a couple of materials from mechanism that we've already made. And it's basically just like mechanisms wrench. And I can go ahead and give this some power. I don't actually think this requires any power to use though. So let's go ahead and just bring this back over here. And we can basically just shift right click to set what we want all these to do. When the pipe is set like this, it means that the pipe is extracting from whatever it's attached to. So if we come in to configure the PRC here, we want to say for the gases, we want to clear the configurations. So for the back of them, we want to output the gas. We're also going to be inputting items from the right, input on the right, just like that. I think the fluids are also gonna be coming in from the right as well. So those should be all good as default. What we can do is shift right click on this PRC, which then stores all the data from how the sides are configured. And then we can just right click on all of these other machines and that'll automatically paste in all the configurations that we have. Also for the gases tab, we also want an input from the left hand side because that's where we're gonna actually be inputting the hydrogen from on the left. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and put more pressurized tubes down on the side like this and disconnect them because we don't actually want these two sets of tubes connecting because this one's going to have hydrogen in it and th these ones will have the ethylene in it. Right here, we're probably going to have our electrolytic separators now. So let's go ahead and grab those out here so we can stack them just like this. And we want the pipe to come all up the back just like so. And we're going to say for the gases, we want to on the back output number one because Hydrogen always goes into the number one slot in this separator, and we don't want to put the oxygen out, only the hydrogen. We can go ahead and say we want to dump excess of the oxygen and idle on the hydrogen. So again, we can go in here and get our configuration card and just shift right click, and that should make them all the right setting. But these also require fluid and power. So we want to actually input the fluid from the left, which they're all set to already. And that's where we're going to start using laser nodes from laser IO. They're going to sit right here at the bottom here. We can have one sink, which will be covered up at some point, but this is where we're going to have the sink sitting for now. Now we want all three of these nodes to be linked. So let's go ahead and grab our wrench and shift right click on this node right here and then right click the other two, which will link their actions together. So for this bottom node, we want to take a fluid card on the downside. So we can go ahead and see up, down, north, all the directions are on the top here. The downside here, we want to be fluid and we want this to be an extract. And we want this to be a little bit faster than this. Let's grab our card overclockers out. Let's put maybe two of these in here. 
and then we can go ahead and basically max out the speed at i'm not sure what the max is here i'm just going to keep left clicking there are four buckets every 10 ticks i think that'll be enough for what we're going to need here now on all the north sides of the other nodes here we want to send fluid in and this starts to fill up with water so we should see that all of these start to fill up with water which they are perfect and now they're just missing power so the plan that we have for power here is we're going to grab a point out of here so we don't have a ton of power right now but just to get this going we want to send an energy card into the top which will be extracting power we're going to want to put in a couple of overclockers in and it looks like 16,000 RF per tick is the maximum here, which I think is gonna be fast enough. And then we're gonna set our point to our network. Now, if we put one energy card into the side, these should all start to work, albeit very slowly because they're gonna start filling up this back pressurized tube, which is inserting the hydrogen into our PRCs. Okay, so I put muffler upgrades into these. I haven't put any of the speed upgrades in yet. I'll go and upgrade them at the very end of this all, but for now, this side is basically all taken care of. Let's go ahead and get the crushers out. So our crushers are now in a row, very symmetrical to our separators over here. So we're actually gonna put laser nodes on the back of all the crushers, and then one also below it like this. Then we're gonna break out that block and place down a sink to provide water as well. This water actually isn't going into the crushers. We're gonna actually use this water right here to go into the PRCs because they need water as the other part of this to start producing ethylene. Let's get our pedestal out of here and our material generator. As soon as we grab the material generator and put it on. There we go, we have moss coming in at a good rate. If we have to, we can speed this up. So our crushers are gonna receive items from the back, but we also want them to send items out the back as well. We can do this by putting the input output setting onto the back which is going to basically allow us to pump items in and out from the same face as long as the auto eject is turned on and then we'll go grab our configuration card and apply it to all of these let's go ahead and link all these together before i forget so we have to go ahead and link them just like this so we want to extract the moss from this side so if we go ahead and grab an item card set this to extract and then throw in a couple of the overclockers here we can go ahead and extract 32 every 10 ticks and then we can start inserting them in very simply by putting one card in each of these. And there we go, we have a stack of moss in every single crusher pretty much. Now this is where we have to start adding in some of these basic filters. We actually have to filter the item card here so we only send in the moss. So we can put one basic filter in, say one moss block goes in, allow. There we go, so now we should only have moss blocks ever going into these factories. Another item extract, but we wanna filter it so that it only accepts biofuel. And now if we put some of these laser nodes on the other side of the PRCs. We know that the items are going to be coming in from the right. Let's shift right click on this and link it to all of these nodes as well. We also want to be extracting the water from the underside here. There we go. Eight buckets per tick is coming out of this sink now. And we can actually go ahead and insert it very easily on the side here just by putting in one fluid card into each of these. Now all they need is to get a little bit of biofuel and then they'll start producing ethylene. One thing we can do for the power is by linking this one node here with some power by going energy card extract. I have a really fast energy card in here. And then once we give these some energy cards as well, these will start getting powered. We also want to power all of these. Let's go ahead and put in a couple of these item cards now though, and these should start to put biofuel inside of these machines. Okay, so our gas burning generators have all started producing power. We do have some plugs though, so I can actually start making use of a little, of a little bit of this power. So we wanna basically be putting all the power into these plugs. So these are all staying powered though, which is good, but we do have to filter these item cards to only put in the biofuel. because so we don't want these to basically put in anything other than that, or it could stall the whole system. So let's go ahead and muffle all the generators right now. We'll have to come back and do the PRCs in a little bit. So to take care of the substrate coming out of here, we're actually gonna grab some of these and give them a drawer for now. There we go, we'll put them in this drawer right here. And that way we can actually just hook up an ender chest. Let's go ahead and say in this, we want to set an item insertion, but we want to have this only be for substrate, not for biofuel. We want to actually set the items to be on auto eject input and output on the right. And there we go, all of these have been filtered. So these should all start extracting our substrate into our main storage system. We're gonna have to upgrade these cables at some point because these are actually gonna produce more than our cables can provide. For now let's grab our universal cables out of here and start hooking these up. 
I do want these separated though, so we don't actually run into a throughput issue. So now all three of these plugs are grabbing power from each of these cables. All we have to do now is effectively just speed everything up because currently these are running at kind of their slowest speed. We have no speed or energy upgrades in them. Besides the cables up front, it's only three wide and just like, you know, seven by three, which is actually a very small setup, all things considered, or something that's going to be giving us an absolute ton of power. Like this is going to be like probably close to 600,000 and RF per tick, which is absolutely insane. And I think what we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and use some of these upgrades here to first upgrade these machines, and then we'll go ahead and make more of the material to upgrade all the machines over at our power setup. And maybe we can even go to the next tier on these machines with the tier installers. Oh, we need a couple more of the infused alloy here, but that should be doable. We can get four, nice. So we can actually go ahead and convert all of our machines And there we go, we have all of our speed and energy upgrades made up and ready to insert into the uh, machines over there. This is overkill right now because these gas burning generators only produce what they need to to support the system. And currently we're only really we're only really powering ourselves. So ourself, some of the machines over there which aren't running anymore, and also the power here. So all of this in here is just power just sitting waiting to be generated. But a good way to show how much power we're actually producing is by getting a trash can out of here a energy trash can and we can come back here and grab ourselves a point if we put an energy trash can on here like this and we set this priority to be the lowest so it'll only ever trash the energy if everything else is powered first we can go ahead and set that to negative one and then also select our network and you can see that we're trashing about 500,000 RF or FE in this case. And it's actually supposed to be higher because I'm pretty sure that these can produce more. These can produce up to about 6.5 millibuckets per tick is their max. And we're actually limited by these cables. So maybe we can go ahead and upgrade the, the cables really quick and then we'll actually see what our maximum power is. To upgrade our cables to the next tier, we have to go ahead and enrich some diamonds. Let me get one more of the metallurgic infusers out. Now, if we put the enriched diamond in here, this is actually going to fill up with diamond quite a bit. And now what we can do is basically put some of the infused alloy inside of here after we've uh, upgraded the speed and power and we get these reinforced alloys. So if we take our universal cable like this and place one reinforced alloy in the middle, we get the elite cables. And now we should see an increase in our power. Yeah, 650,000 FE per tick is what we're producing and trashing right now. I don't even see us using that much power until we're basically at the point where we're gonna be making antimatter. Now that we basically have no more power issues, I'm really excited to dive into a new storage mod very soon. And I think the mod we're gonna get into is Applied Energistics. That's a mod that I haven't really played around with too much and I really wanna try it out. And I can't wait to build something really cool around this, but unfortunately that's gonna have to wait till the next episode. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did like this episode, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to join the Discord if you haven't already. The link is in the description down below. But that's it for me, everybody. I will catch you in the next episode, and I hope you all have a good one. Bye!